In the previous video, I only mentioned the fact that the Russian general staff is trying to dispose the inconvenient private military company Wagner Group. The conflict between the Russian defense ministry and Prigozhin, the one who owns the private military company Wagner, only confirms that the situation with artillery ammunition for Russian troops is getting worse by the day. At the same time, they are leaking quite detailed information about the supply and shortage of ammunition to assess this situation. For example, the enemy defense ministry reported that the Wagner Group, near Bakhmut, received 1,660 rockets, 1,071 shells for barrel artillery and mortars, and 980 rounds for tanks between February 18th and 20th. For his part, Prigozhin lamented that the Wagner Group was under-receiving 80% of the required ammunition. And here is very interesting, 80% of the under-received ammunition, taking into account the 10,171, is another 40,684 rounds. So Prigozhin was expecting about 50,855 shells in total for barrel artillery. Well, keep this figure in mind, because it will come up during our discussion. Well, in the meantime, our favorite rubric is this entertaining mathematics. In particular, 980 rounds for tanks is actually a full ammunition for two tank companies. That's enough for one active day of the war. And this ammunition was supplied within three days. 10,171 shells for artillery is 3,390 rounds for three days, or even less. In turn, an average of up to 200 rounds per kilometer of front line per day should be used to support the offensive, that is, at the current line of engagement at Bakhmut, more than 6,000 rounds per day. But if Prigozhin had received 50,855 artillery shells, it would have been almost 17,000 rounds per day or more than 550 rounds per kilometer of the front. Overall, this is a requirement consistent with the firing rampart tactics used by Russian forces at the very beginning of the invasion of Ukraine. Thus, we can speak of a shortage of ammunition in the most active area of combat operations. And this deficit is at least 50% of the requirements. That is, the information about the general deficit, and the decline of the Russian troops' ability to proportionally provide their units with ammunition is confirmed. Moreover, even in the hottest part of the combat zone, concentrating enormous forces and means, especially artillery, which the occupants have the most of all the sectors near Bakhmut, they are unable not only to implement the tactics of a rampart, but even to provide artillery ammunition by half. Meanwhile, Russian occupiers continue to remove from conservation the oldest Soviet scrap metal, experiencing a sharp shortage of armored vehicles. The first footage of deconserved BTR-50P sent to the combat zone in Ukraine has appeared. BTR-50P was produced from 1954 to 1970. Russia has up to a thousand units in storage. It should be noted that not all BTR-50PS in Russian storage are suitable for refurbishment. The emergence of these mastodons once again confirms the crisis in the Russian armed forces in supplying equipment to its units. But more on that in the next issue.